Hey guys, a quick vlog answering a question from a student. I'll try to answer some of these questions, although some of them will require a little bit more than a vlog to answer. Anyway, here we go. Another thing, I want to do some freelancing on the side while digging deeper into web development. I already know a couple of small businesses who need a website like My Osteopath, Lady, Farm Shops, etc. Very good, that's where you start. You talk to people that you know, you walk in and you say, hey, I got some uh, web design skills, let me help you out. Let me continue reading his email. But there are still lots of questions outside the programming scope, like what image processing skills and tools do I need? Well, these days with modern web design, where you're building responsive websites, as I teach in my HTML and CSS course, really you don't really need too much in terms of image editing skills. Not like it was 10 years ago. Basically, you just need a pretty clean image. Make sure it's at 96 kilobit uh, pixels an inch. Uh, don't make it uh, for print if you don't know what that is. I talk all about that in my course. So you don't really need much in terms of image editing. Usually it's just a nice, clean, solid images, solid photos like you see on... Uh, well, let me show you. Let me load up a site here. Uh, even Apple, right? This is just good photography and just cut it nicely. Again, this is probably a 3D rendering. I know, 3D rendering, but this is pretty fancy. You know, this is Apple. If we go to a simpler site like, I don't know, uh, Studio Web. What is Studio Web? So Studio Web. Again, you see the image editing here. It's very simple. This is just an image. All we did here was blur out some point points here and there. You could do this with basic Photoshop or free Photoshop-like apps like the GIMP, G-I-M-P, well, T-H-E, GIMP, G-I-M-P. That's another option. And there are uh, online image editing tools. I think Sparrow is one of them. You can just search for Google online image editing. And you can just do basic Things like cuts and crops and maybe blur out sections. You don't necessarily need to get a Photoshop. As you can see, it's pretty simple. That being said, if you find yourself having to do a lot of image processing, then depending on what you need to do, you might want to get into basic Photoshop. But the GIMP will do it, and there are many other less expensive programs out there that will do it. Personally, rare times that I do it these days, I just use something called Zera. It's Windows only, but on Mac, a lot of times I just do screenshots of uh, of uh, images that I want, and I just upload them, and away we go. Should I demand that they hire a photography or do it myself if they have no pictures? Ah, that's a good question. Depend. Don't demand anything from the client. Just give them options in terms of what you're willing to do or at what price. Now, if you have a camera available and you know how to take photos, then just add it into the price or say, listen, I can do it, but it's going to cost you more and you just charge them your rate or you can say well we need a picture what you know we need a picture that does it looks like this looks like that you got to direct them so they deliver the photos that's something you should uh, learn if you watch my vlogs you want to be careful with regards to having to deal with clients waiting for them to come up with the goods photos text etc video so i always recommend my 33 33 33 payment scheme, if you will, or payment structure so that you get 33% upfront before you start doing work, 33% when you deliver the first draft, and then the last 33% when the final site is up. And the reason I do the 33, 33, 33 is because you want to get that 66% of the money very quickly because what you're going to find many a times, you will have built a lot of the site and then you might wait months and months before they actually deliver on bringing you the final photos that you need or delivering the final text that you need to complete the site. Just keep that in mind. How do I get a logo from paper in digital format? Well, you can use uh, scanning, right? You could uh, scan the logo in high resolution if they can't deliver the logo to you in a digital format. And then from that, you can use uh, software like Adobe Illustrator, Azera. They're able to scan take scans and turn them into vectors. Uh, assume the logo is going to have very simple shapes. So that's the way to do it. Again, you got to charge them for that if they're not able to, to deliver that. 
And if you can't do that, you don't want to do that, there might be services that allow you to do that pretty easily. Being able to identify shapes and scan them and digitize them is becoming very, very easy these days, not what it was 10 years ago. Next question. If there is no logo, it is my job to create one. Only if you contract to do that and uh, check around logo design, there may be, there's lots of sites out there that they'll do logo design and say, listen, we can hire people to do logo design. It could be very cheap with Fiverr and stuff. Depending on how much they want to pay, just work with them. Your job as a contractor is only what you put in a contract that you're going to do. And if they want you to do it, you just charge them extra for that. And if it's not core to your expertise, for instance, you don't want to do logo design because not because that's not what you do, then hire somebody to do that. There are sites online like Fiverr and others that just go logo design. And sometimes you can just buy logos prefab and say, okay, what kind of business do you have? So if they're osteopath, you can go to these sites, just search for them on Google, where you can type in osteopath or chiropractor or medical type logos. And uh, they have a slew of logos that you can buy for whatever dollars. It could be 50 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks. Trust me, buying a logo prefab for 100 bucks is much better than creating your own from scratch. That is for sure. So that's what I would suggest that you do there. And what you would do is just like when you're presenting designs, you say if they want a logo from you, they say, okay, I'm going to go to a local place and I'm going to tell them we can do custom logos. It's going to cost you X amount of dollars. Find a custom guy, get the pricing. Or we can use one of these places and then present to them like three to four logos to choose from. And then you just, you know, put that in place. That's what I would do because I, I used to do that kind of stuff. I have a graphic design background, but... If you want to be a developer, develop, right? Don't get into design unless you want to. So again, whatever you want to do, that's up to you to do, to put in a contract. It's up to you. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You're not, they're not your boss. You you're, you are your own boss. You decide what work want, you want to do. And if you they want you to do it, hire people in and just bill them for it and take a little piece for yourself because you have to take count your time trying to find these contractors. Next question, how to conduct the project on a business side? Well, I gave you some tips right there. I'm going to be putting together a course. I have it written out, actually, and I talked about it about a month ago. I've just been so busy with work. I'm going to put together an entrepreneurial ba entrepreneur business. I've been an entrepreneur for 28 years, many different businesses. I've had my successes. And so I'm going to be putting together a course that discusses all these things, something that I wish I would have had when I was young. So if you're listening to this and you're watching this, and that type of course would interest you, let me know in the comments below because the more comments I get, the more likely I'm going to put out this course. Uh, like I said, I've written it out already. I don't know what it is. I forget. It's like 50 lessons or something. It's going to be uh, video and podcast format so you can listen to it as you go. Uh, and uh, I'll continue with his email. Like communication from start to end of calculating rates, what details should be in a contract and contain. Anyway, that would be in the course. You know, um, If you look... In my YouTube collection, I talk about this stuff. Uh, I talk about contracts. I talk a bit about calculating rates. It's in the YouTubes. Just search for that in my YouTube vlogs. You know, I got hundreds. So, and there, uh, there's some business stuff in there. Uh, yes, next, reselling hosting. Again, I talked about that as well. In a nutshell, though, reselling hosting can be good. I used to do it. I used to have my own hosting servers and everything, but I sold that business whatever, eight years ago. I still have my residuals from that. But it's understand when you start doing hosting, you're probably going to have to deal with email tech support. Ah, we lost our emails. What do we do? How do we, you know? You may want to partner with a hosting company and just get an affiliate link. And then, you you know, you, could, you can make $80, $100 for every hosting client you bring them. So better to hook them up with a hosting company company and uh, make sure they won't compete with you in terms of your web design services and get an affiliate link and just make a quick hundred bucks you know and not have to deal with the headaches unless your plan is long term to have hundreds and hundreds of hosting clients but understand you have to deal with tech support issues and it can get very annoying when you're getting calls uh, Friday afternoon at four o'clock saying that their emails don't work and it turns out that they just lost their passwords keep that in mind so, last question he asked. Do you think these topics, are you going to cover them on YouTube channel, Killer Sites? I think I answered that. I have covered some of them at least. 
a good book or other resource. Well, I'm putting it together, so let me know, you guys on YouTube. I have the course on it. It takes a bit of work to put it out, but you know, because it's business-oriented, for me anyway, it's easier to put out than a code course. It's structured. Also, I've been doing business 28 years. It's kind of like second nature for me, so I just, you know, it's easy for me to get out compared to other things. That's about it. See you in the next vlog.